Hi, my name is Penterik Lövgren, and I will tell you a little bit about Swedish story and roadmap, and uh, that it is possible for biomass to make a difference. First, briefly about Sweden. We have no own sources of oil, gas, or coal, and we are, are forced to prioritize our own sources of renewable energy carriers. We have a rather big country with a small population. We are just about 10 million. About 85% of us are living in urban areas. We, our society and uh, uh, country are depending on forestry, on mines, on car industry, telecom, etc. And we have a very good assets for biomass, cheap electricity production from hydropower and windmills, and a sustainable fuel production. We have plenty of wilderness and areas for ecotourism. So Sweden today is a leading nation in the world when it comes to environmental thinking. So I'm very proud to be able to present our success story. If we look upon the share of energy from the renewable sources in the EU member states in 2018, we can see that the target for the European Union is 20%. And to fulfill uh, the target, we have splitting up for, for different countries has the different target. And the Swedish target was 50%. But we have already in 2018 reached 55% of renewable in our energy balance. It will be different in the future. Uh, during 2021, in July, uh, we implemented e e European Union's Fit for 55. That's a, a new climate law, uh, which uh, target is uh, to uh, 2030 reached 55% renewable compared to the, the level of 1990. And that's approximately the same level that Sweden reached today, should reach by all European Union, states in European Union. Also in renewable sources for transport, Sweden, Finland and Netherlands are, are sticking out a bit, together with Norway, who are, are not including inside the European Union, but, but they have lots of electricity for, for their vehicles in, in Norway. We have in Sweden mostly uh, biodiesel and bioethanol, not so much electricity yet, but we have reached 30% uh, of renewable uh, consumption in the fuel of transport sector already today. And the target for European Union is 10%. When we're talking about changing uh, electricity, changing energy system, people are afraid of that they've had to sacrifice uh, lots of, of what they are doing in the, the in the common days, they had to be thrown back to the 19th century and sacrifice lots of things that they are used to. I would try to show you that it is possible to make a difference without sacrificing. You, if you don't look backwards and instead looking forwards for possibilities and opportunities instead of difficulties, you can reach lots of advantage for the future. So let's take it from the, the beginning. It was not so smart for Sweden to have all the eggs in the same basket. We learned that the hard way. If we go back to early 1980s in Sweden, that were back in the happy days, the price of heating oil has been extremely low for several decades. Sweden has become almost 100% depending on imported oil. And the price of oil was so low that the cost of heating was not including in a housing calculation. 
happy days. But when the price in the oil crisis rose, in the current prices almost 10 times in just a decade, from around 0.09 euro to 0.85 euro in 1979. Of course, higher prices for petrol and heating then affected the whole economy in Sweden with major problem for both for, for the state of Sweden and for household and company as a result. So it was obvious. We had to get rid of oil dependence as soon as possible. And we also had a wild political backing from both the left and the right side of the politicians to make a long term and credi credible agenda. We had to agree to get rid of, of, of uh, for imported energy. So as early as 1991, Sweden politicians set a price for greenhouse gas emissions. And the price was rather high. It was uh, based upon uh, fossil carbon content on fuels. And it was introduced along with existing energy taxes. Um, industry which are converted by ETS system were, were excluded from the system. But all I, other industries, small industries and enterprises, uh, had to put the carbon tax upon the ETS uh, trade and, 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 uh, system, and uh, emission trade system. The Swedish carbon tax is about 139 US dollar per ton emissions of carbon dioxide. And that is, if we compare to, to UK, five times hi higher than the carbon tax in UK are today. And it's uh, higher than every other countries in the world. And it, uh, the price are almost double up the price of the emissions in the ETS system cup and trade. So increasing carbon tax increase the cost of all kind of fossil energy sources. And that become a success to increase the price of fossil energy instead of giving high sub substitutes to the renewable energy. The Act gives the result that all renewable energy competes on equal terms. That develops the whole renewable industry, not only biomass, but windmills, solar and so on are also de developed in the same time. The politicians' roadmap in Sweden is rather simple to understand. We had to save energy. We had to use as low energy uh, amount as possible. So avoid unnecessary energy use at the bottom of the line. If we use energy, we had to reuse as much as possible. We had to improve or replace old technology with better technology. And if we had to take new energy in place, that has to be uh, only renewable energy sources. With that roadmap and that policy, the Sweden, Swedish energy balance in 2020 are really impressive. We have reached 55% of the total use of energy coming from renewable. That's include both lighting, heating, transport, and every use of energy are 55% coming from renewable sources. And bioenergy alone are taking 38.9% of the, the, the uh, use of energy. That is one, almost 140 terawatt hours in our country. So more than one third of the energy balance in Sweden today are coming from biomass. That is obvious that the driving force for a carbon neutrality in our country is biomass and bioenergy. So what happened 
in Sweden? Did we be thrown back 100 years? Did we have to sacrifice a lot of things in our country? Are we a poor country in Sweden today? No. At the same time that we increased the carbon tax from, from uh, uh, 1990, we of course decreased the use of fossil energy. If the price increase, the use decrease. And the emissions have been dropped with 30%. But during the same time, we can show that we, we increase the GDP with 73%. And that, that's a little bit amazing because people, many, many economists, they believe that there is equal with the emissions and GDP. We have to, to use more fossil energy to increase the GDP, but we can show the opposite by using biomass instead of fossil energy we have forced the economy in the same way from 1990 until today we have increased the use of biomass with 113 percent and we have increased the gdp as well we have been richer as a country by using more biomass but cutting trees to cut carbon footprint. There is a huge discussion all over the world that it is climate better to, to let the trees standing in the forest and we shouldn't firing up our forest. Let me take it from the beginning. Biomass can never emit more carbon dioxide than trees are taking up during their growth. When we're firing biomass, we are paying back the same amount of carbon dioxide as the tree has already taken from the atmosphere. When we're using fossil energy, we are release carbon who has been trapped for millions of years in the, the ground. So there is a huge difference between biological CO2 and, and uh, carbon who are fossil carbon dioxide. In our society, biomass are coming from 100% byproducts from the forest industry. We don't cut any trees just for fire. Biomass used for fuel, plastic, uh, textiles provides a higher value than uh, biomass produced for heat. So it's obvious that the forest owner rather prefer to sell it to plastic industry, to fuel industry, than to sell it for just for heat. We have reduced our climate footprint by replacing fossil energy for heat and power production, in the, in the, mostly in, in district heating plants. But we do not deforest. Our Swedish forests are increasing carbon storage by approximately 36 million tons every year, independent on what we are taking out from the forest. Bioenergy creates job and welfare even outside in the metropolitan, even outside the metropolitan areas, in the rural areas, and money stays in the local economy and creates welfare. And, and keep the, the schools and, and service uh, left in the, in the municipalities. So the discussions about uh, cutting forest for fuel, that, that is another discussion. Of course, the world needs sustainable forestry with an aim to increase the growth and biodiversity rather than and let the the forest is the, let the trees stand in foresty. It's better to use a good sustainable foresty to, to prevent the climate effect. We are today in a running, up a running climate crisis and we had to do something. And there is a huge uh, discussions of using more wood in building constructions instead of steel and concrete that will save lots of carbon dioxide 50 percent of what is cut in the forest 
becomes residual products. That's branches, tops, sawdust, bark, etc. And it's always climate smart to lock in coal in buildings and other long-standing products, as well as have it standing in standing trees in the forest. It would be almost stupid to take advantage to not take advantage of the byproducts that are still left when we are cutting forest for other products. Nothing is waste. Recovering of residual products is our key and would be your key for profitability in the forestry. Upgrading sawdust to pellets creates a high quality and storable and carry energy carrier which are able to transport over long distance from where the, the raw material is to where the demand becomes. Wood mass that replaces fossil raw materials is always better for the climate. In our country, district heating was a key role for success. As soon as you, the pipes are grounded, you have a lots of opportunities. It's not necessary to use biomass as a heating source. You can use coal, you can use natural gas, you can use oil, you can use whatever you, you will for, for energy carrier. You are completely independent of what energy carriers you use in your, your plant. You can use heat pumps, you can heat recovery from uh, sewerage uh, water from data center, you can take care of, of uh, energy waste from industrial processes and so on. And if you use an accumulator in the system, you have also a smoother output of the, the power. We can reduce emissions uh, instead of many small chimneys, small boilers, uh, during all over the municipality, we have one large boilers with good cleaning systems. It's cost effective and it's comfortable and give the customers a secure heating source for the future. And with a grid of heat in the district heating grid, you also have the possibility to make uh, bioelectricity with a CHP production in, together with district heating. Also in outside, outside the, the, the district heating network, outside the grid, in the rural areas, wood log and pellet boilers are come, become also very popular in private homes. And we have also developed a better technology with less of emissions, less of particles and so on. And it also works very well with a minimum of, of uh, marketing from, from, uh, uh, from the people and service from the people. So if we conclude with bioheat in Sweden, we can say that 100% of the bio, bio energy in Sweden are coming from forest industry, almost 100%. There are some coming also from agricultural sources. Bioenergy and rest heat from forest industry covering up 70% of the fuel supply in district heating. We have today 560 heating plants using biomass and waste inside Sweden. And uh, there is uh, almost in every municipality at least one heating plant with this heating. We also have over 90 CHP plants and together with turbines in the forest industry we have an installed capacity of 4300 megawatt of electricity production capacity in with biomass in, in Sweden. Biopower from, from CHP are very valuable to balance power from windmills and, and PV solar. And we also produce the most of, of biopower uh, with, together with, with uh, district heating in the winter time when the demand of heat are, are as high as possible. 
both within district and local heating market, our businesses and our knowledge is among the top ranking in the world. In a normal year, biopower in Sweden produce 7% of the, our use of electricity. That's almost 12 terawatt hours. Let me give a huge and good example. Stockholm Exergy provide our capital with heat and power. The Vattaverk and CHP are located inside the city of, of capital of, of Stockholm. 95% of all buildings in Stockholm, all over 800,000 citizens, get their heat from uh, Stockholm HG. The heating grid in total are 3,000 kilometers, and the district cooling grid is 250 kilometers. And residual byproducts are converted into 700, 7, 750 gigawatt hours of electricity and gives more than 1700 gigawatt hours of heat. Stockholm Energy has currently more than 700 full time employers. But that's not all. In the autumn 2019, they implemented the first research facility for bio-CCS was uh, installed in, in uh, Stockholm. Uh, Bio-carbon capture and storage is a way to, to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Fully developed, this bio-CCS from uh, Stockholm Exergy could provide a carbon sink for more than 800,000 tons of carbon dioxide annually. And Stockholm Energy also has uh, created biochar plant, which produce approximately 4,500 tons of biochar. And together with the rest heat from the biochar production, they produce heat for 3,500 apartments. So this is a good example of what you can do, even in a larger city, by using biomass, if you have a, a good sustainability in your minds and you have good politicians who run it. Biomass and other renewables is almost entirely carbon neutral. Everyone know, knows that. But is it good enough? We are today in an uprunning climate crisis. We had to take care of lots of opportunities. We have a huge things, huge difference to think about. We should need a reverse gear to repair already emitted emissions. That would be good. We have for hundreds of years released fossil carbon to the atmosphere. And now we need to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and dig it down in the ground again. A reverse gear. Bioshore and bio-CCS, carbon capture and storage, can be such a reverse gear to repair already emit emitted mistakes. To look in carbon and fertilize the soil, as we can do with bioshore production, is a win-win situation. And it's not only open for, for big companies. We have in Sweden, we can show you that it also is possible for a smaller agriculture enterprises to produce biochar at the same time as they produce heat. One good example is Edvard Hamilton, Jansetter in Sweden. He said, the heat comes out and warming up all my houses and the coal comes out in the sacks and fertilize the soil. So it's possible to make difference. Before I conclude, let me introduce Heat Academy. Heat Academy is an international training, collaboration and innovative platform created by Peter Anderberg in Sweden. Heat Economy is 
created a platform for for created for training cooperation for innovation related in decarbonizations target is to to create the best praxis by involving local colleagues universities public inst in institutions energy operators investors to a wider supply chain heat economy Academy is a fully independent organization. There is today at least one ongoing uh, activity uh, in HIT Academy, in, and that it's ongoing in Scotland. And feel free to contact Peter Anderberg for more info. You have the, the uh, phone number and, and uh, uh, email address below. So, summing up to conclude, the roadmap in Sweden, you remember, avoid unnecessary energy use, refuse, improve, uh, reuse, improve or replace old technology and use only renewable energy sources. You have to do it your own way, based upon your own circumstances, because there are so many different ways in these societies in Sweden compared to what you have in your, your part. How is it uh, with, with uh, energy sources? How is the, the building uh, constructions? What is the political way? And so on. You have to do it your own way. But think positive. Nothing is impossible. If we, if we are working together and if we are thinking positively. Seek a broad political agreement, political agreement that's necessary for a long time solutions, not only for a short way. We need the, to, to, to change the system for a long term. Carbon tax is always a better system than grants. Because carbon tax brings money into the government. Grants let money go out from the government. And incoming money can use for uh, getting more information, to, to building up systems that are, are even better for, for the, the, the climate. And learn from Sweden. Don't put all the eggs in the same basket. All renewable alternatives are needed. Don't go for only for electrification. We need the solar, we need windmills, we need everything and extremely demand of biomass, who are the world's largest energy carrier of renewable sources. Worldwide, we produce more energy from biomass than we do from every other kind of renewable energy sources together. Remember that. So, if we can tell you what to do, you had to do it your own way. I'm sure that we in Sweden already have done most of all the mistakes that can be done. So if we can tell you what to do, we surely can tell you what not to do. So let's build the future together. Thank you for listening.